so hey what's up guys I decided to do this video this new video series on the uh, pick microcontroller assembler you see um, microchip technology recently released the new MP lab um, pick assembler the triplace MP ASM the new MP lab X8 pick assembler you know it's supposed to um, replace this decades old MPASM um, assembler so you know assembly language is something that can be daunting a lot of people think that you know you must have to learn a lot of information and it's true assembly language is um, a bit more complex than something like C or C++ because you have to know the intricates of the part you're working with um, there isn't much abstraction compared to something like C or C++ so you know programs written in assembly language are usually much larger than an equivalent C program and you have a lot more lines of code in it to perform a equivalent function but the benefit of using assembly is that assembly language programs occupy much less memory than a C program and they run much faster for specific use cases you know if you're doing like handcrafted assembly poorly handcrafted assembly you know will not perform better than um, a compiler optimized code but it will on the other hand still occupy less memory good handcrafted assembly language code will not only occupy less memory and you know have that compact code um, density going for it but it will also outperform code generated by the compiler um, learning assembly is very important because it allows you to be able to see the output of your compiler and you can tell what's going on in your code especially with these tools where you know you must pay to get maximum optimization having the ability to put some inline assembly that could perform at a much faster um, a much faster speed than regular C code you know it, it will come in handy especially for things when you know things like motor control applications power supply design those kind of things if you want to toggle like a few LEDs um, probably read a few switches on your device then probably an assembly equivalent device will be better than using a device with C because you'll be able to squeeze much more memory from that device you know you can get a lot of you know cost savings that way let's take a look at um, the pick microcontroller that we'll be using my favorite microcontroller family is the pick stemming from the pick um, 16f 171x family so the 1717, 1718, and 1719. In this particular series, you'll be using the PIC 16F1718 devices. These devices can run, you know, as can run up to 32 megahertz, you know, so that's 125 nanoseconds um, instruction clock cycle. You have a lot of goodies on these devices, things like timers and brownout reset, took care of SRAM you know 16k of flash you know you have um endurance flash with 100,000 nearest right cycles so oh yeah, look these can even run the LF version of these can run as low as 1.8 and the regular version as low as 2.3 you know straight up to 5.5 but for the pick 16f devices you know we usually use them at at around 5 volts or 3.3 volts we don't usually go below 3.3 volts unless you have a specific need case application because a lot of modules are already designed to work with either 3.3 or 5 volts and sensor so it makes sense to use them at that um, particular voltage range so you have a lot of stuff on this in the configurable logic cell complementary output generator numeric control oscillator pwm um, capta compare you know um, operational amplifiers there's a lot of goodies that you get on this device. It's your crazy tech and docs and 
It's a really um, powerful comprehensive device. This is the device you'll be using. In this first example, what I really wanted to do is simply get you acquainted with PIC uh, microcontrollers and PIC assembly. The PIC microcontroller usually falls into baseline devices, enhanced baseline, mid-range, enhanced mid-range and advanced devices. These devices fall into the enhanced mid-range tier, so it's not as advanced as something like a PIC-18, but you know, you'll know you have a lot more features than something like a baseline device. With this is device we'll be using and we'll actually be connecting um, pin RC3 and letting and just turn it on. That's just to ensure that our hardware and software is set up so we can move forward with other other programs in the tutorial series. So let's take a look at the code. But before we reach that, I wanted to talk about a little bit about um, the assembler. So the assembler we'll be using is the um, file project properties. We'll be using the um, the pick slash as pick dash as um, um, assembler that actually places the MP ASM assembler, and we'll also be using the MP Lab X ID. It's a lot more um, beginner friendly than using the command line because you just press this one button here and you get everything running. You pick the um, dash AS assembler. It's um, a very seamless integration. So all the um, macro assembler and utility functions are included. So you don't have to worry about that. Just press this big nice green button and everything goes. So how this works is that you know you have an assembly um, language file. And this file is what contains the instructions that the uh, microcontroller will run but the assembly language these are not the actual instructions that are executed on the device these assembly language are actually pneumo uh, mnemonics that are you know much easier to remember than the binary instructions that actually be executed on the microcontroller so person say you know like assembly language is difficult to learn but the core of these pick 16 devices only uses like 35 instructions and with as little as 20 you know instructions that you'll see being repeated over and over you could write comprehensive programs in assembly so this assembly program will be taken by assembler and then converted into instructions that our microcontroller can understand and there's a special circuit on the microcontroller the called the instruction decoder that will actually take our assembled code that will be produced into some what we call a hex file and will actually um, run the instructions from that hex file so enough about theory let's get into the code so you'll understand how it works because the best way to learn assembly is to actually um, run programs and write code so our project layout section we'll be most concerned with is our source files folder so in our source file folder we have this file main.s assembly language programs on the pic dash as um, assembler and then at dot s extension um, the mp asm or mp asm assembler use dot asm files for as the extension but we'll be using the dot s extension that's supported by the pic dash as assembler so the first thing i want to talk about is comments in an assembly language program comments are lines of code that the assembler ignores and the purpose of comments is really for us the um, programmer or the embedded developer to um, be able to easily maintain the code and so that when other persons read our code they will understand what we are doing this is especially important in assembly language programs where things might not be as clear as in a higher 
level language. So comments are usually um, started with these semicolons. This assembler also supports these C style comments as well. So I just use both in this file so you to understand that you can use both the traditional assembly semicolon comments and you can also use the C style comments. So it's good practice to um, have your file name, the target processor, um, the author of the code, um, the compiler and ID version. This is especially important because you know if someone has to run your code they want to set up the same environment as you even you when you might come back to your code probably some years after you may need to um, you may sometimes have to reinstall your environment and you may wonder what assembler and what ID you are using so I also like to include a little program description that tells you what the um, program actually actually does and a hardware description that tells you how the hardware is connected so users have a little idea of what is happening because a lot of times people um, you know they just provide code and they don't explain how it's actually connected then we have our time and date information set up so the first thing we'll do is on line 15 here you'll notice that we use this processor directive within an assembly language program a directive is something that tells the assembler um, what to what to do so this processor directive here um, tells the processor to do something and in this case it tells us it tells the assembler the device we're using is the pic 16f1718 device and on line 16 we have our xc.inc.inc extension. Anytime you see an inc extension on an assembly file, it's it means that the file is an include file. So what happens is in this file there are headers and you know other assembly language instructions that actually allow us to access registers for the device, among other things, including probably other assembly directives. Now from lines 18 to lines 34, we have what is known as the configuration words or the configuration bits for the device. So the configuration bits allows us to control specific functionality on the device. For example, you'll see a configuration bit to set up the um, internal oscillator. You'll also see configuration bits to do things like control or watchdog timer to disable or enable low voltage programming to control the, the phase lock loop on the microcontroller for code protection and a lot of other functionality um, this is really important burnout reset in particular is important for microcontroller based devices especially when you're running on things like battery applications the power supply may not always be adequate so it's good to have this circuitry to protect our device in our next section from line 36 to 39 what we actually do is we this is where the um, this is where microcontroller actually starts actually executing our program this part here is where our program begins and the program starts running from what is known as a reset vector if you notice you'll see this keyword here this this piece sec this stands for our program section and what this does is that it takes related parts of the program and it can contain things like code and data objects that are linked in the device memory. So in this part of our program, um, what we wish to do is we wish to use the, um, the PSEC for our, um, our reset vector. So the reset vector is the point at which the program begins running on the um, PIC 16 F1718 device and you know on all 8-bit devices you know these 8-bit pick um, devices the reset vector is, begins at 0000, zero, zero, zero hex in the program memory um, and the OLA MPASM assembly language programs actually define that but I think this um, this newer 
syntax here is a little more intuitive for beginners than the older um, format. Now the next section we have is in our code section. So if you notice our P sect, we select code. You'll notice that you'll see uh, on reset vec and main you'll see labels. So what is a label? Well in assembly a label is actually a representation of an address that we can easily access in our um, in our assembly code. You know like this main this main label we usually use for you know our beginning it's usually labeled main or start and it's an easy way for us to know where the um, address for the start of the program is so if later any code we need to return to this main this main um this main label here instead of remembering addresses we can just remember the um, name for the address which is this label here so on lines 42 to 45 we see the instruction to make our microcontroller actually make a microcontroller pin into an output pin we do that by using a move instruction on the 8-bit pick devices we can't really copy a value directly from one file register to another file register what we must do is we must first take um, copy the byte of data into the working register the working register will be the equivalent of the accumulator and other you know other microcontrollers and other processors and we copy the value from the working register and then from the working register we can place it into another register so to make the pin output pin what we must do is we must clear the bit of the trace register associated with that pin so in order to make a pin and output pin we need to set that the bit associated with that pin to a zero in the trace register in order to do that we need to select the bank in memory where this trace C register is located this bank cell instruction actually tells the linker to select the memory bank into any register you want to use in this case the um, the trace C register and then we use another move instruction this MOVWF what this does is this allows us to move a byte of information we had in the working register and actually place it into the trace C um, trace C register so we have another label on line 48 this label what it does is actually allows us to turn on the LED so we select the bank with our latch or lat C and then use the um, the BSF instruction with set file instruction and what this does is actually sets our specified bit which in this case is the um, lat C bit which is our C3 pin so what this actually does this is the line of code that turns on our LED and then you move to line 52 we have our go to instruction so the go to instruction let us jump to a specified line in the program provided that the line is labeled so this is we can see the application of actually having a label so we can we don't self remember any memory address um, we can just use this go to instruction and go to the LED on label and this line of code will actually form an infinite loop and keep the program running at the end of the program we have what is known as our end directive now the end directive lets the assembler know that we have reached the end of the source code in our module we can build build our program and we see that the build is successful and once it is built, once we have built our program, we can get ready to run. So let's run our program.